eye has blood on it. And we're on the air. <laughs> <laughs> Outstanding. With the bloody eye comment, uh, welcome to the Gamer Reaction Podcast. This, my friends, is podcast number 99. <gasps> 99 Ooh. podcasts of beer on the wall. 99 <laughs> podcasts of beer. <laughs> you take a down, I pass it around. You can kiss the double digits goodbye after this oh. podcast. We will be triple. M. G. There it is, folks. OMG. Uh, yes, this is podcast number 99. Sadly, we do not have Chris with us tonight. Uh, however, I, I think the three of us kind of, you know, make, we, we make up for, for Chris's uh, lack, lack of, of awesome. Lack of awesome. So, um, so yeah, uh, I'll tell you something. Uh, we're coming up to the end of the year. We had, we had some discussion. We had some discussion last time about, uh, about game of the year a little bit. Uh, controversy. A nation was shocked when Chris and I said Batman was better than Skyrim. What? People were shocked. I don't think so. I think that I think that was that's to be expected. Uh, I didn't expect to say that, but I did. <laughs> Jeremy was shocked. Do you, was, do you normally just talk shocked, and you but... don't think about it? You were pretty shocked, Jer. I, I I was pretty shocked, but then you know the the reasoning you came up behind was like okay, well I can I can see that you know the fact that you know Skyrim by its very nature is is glitchy and you just sort of put up with it, whereas uh, Arkham City, which I I didn't play, uh, but apparently is a very polished you know experience. Oh, mwah. c'est magnifique. Hmm. Um. But uh, but we didn't really. It wasn't my game of the year, Skyrim. No, <laughs> your game of the year was Skyrim. Yes, indeed. Yes. Oh, of course. Uh, well, and see, here's the thing. Uh, I think Arkham City was a better, all around, all things considered, a better game. I had more enjoyment playing Skyrim than I did okay. playing Batman, though not by much, because you know I think. We know, I mean, we, it's no secret that I was obsessed with both games. I beat Batman in three days because I couldn't put it down. You know, I, I've put almost 150 hours into Skyrim That's since true. it came out because I couldn't Jeez. put it down. I actually count the uh, part of the experience of waiting up for the game, too. Like, uh, earlier this year, when the first gameplay trailer came out at long last, oh, like, yeah. that was a big moment oh. in my gaming year mm -hmm. when I mm. saw that trailer for the first time. Mm. And yeah, that was beginning of the year, and then like you know, leading up to the game, you know, more and more stuff coming out as as you get closer to it. So, um, you know, for me, that's that you know, my year was very much about Skyrim, way before mm -hmm. it came out too. So, mm -hmm. yeah, well, God, man, you've been you've been talking about Skyrim for God since it was announced. You've been which I miss. I walking like, around with a boner. I remember. <laughs> <laughs> A Skyrim boner, yes. Um, <laughs> I remember uh, when it did get announced, actually, I missed it. And I, I was literally Googling it every day. I was like, it's going to be any day now. It's going to be any day now. They're going to announce it. They're going to oh. announce it. And then I heard it was announced when I showed up for the podcast. And Diana said, oh, Skyrim was announced. I was like, what? <laughs> it was like the one day I didn't check. So. Of, course. of course, that's how it works. Well done. Yeah. Um, but something we, we didn't really discuss were some of the other games that were excellent that came out this year that, um, you know, maybe weren't our favorite games of the year or the Not best games. games of the year, but were still really solid, you know, enjoyable experiences. Mm -hmm. um, and I was thinking, I don't know, maybe we could just start off with uh, eh, briefly uh, talking about some of the... Uh, some of the other good games that came out this year that we played. Is that, are we really doing that today? Oh, I feel bad for Chris. Eh, fuck him. <laughs> <laughs> Here, I'll, I'll speak for Chris. All right, you, because you'll speak for Chris. Chris and I are Star Wars gay, so I feel like we can, I can speak for him. <laughs> you guys are, like, married. Yeah. 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 No, actually, he would kill me if I said that on the podcast and did not immediately follow it up with, just kidding. So... <laughs> 
So oh, that's great. don't worry. Just kidding, guys. What? Um, but and and I you know and I, honestly I didn't I didn't really plan on doing this today, but since I already brought it up, uh, we'd be dicks not to. Um, so you know I didn't I didn't go through the archives of 2011 and and look up all the all the great games in case I forgot anything. I didn't do that. I'm just going off the top of my head, and and I'm going to start us off with it with uh, a game that uh, I thoroughly enjoyed, um, L.A. Noir. Was, oh, there we uh, go. Uh, see, I'm having like when you brought it up, I'm having I can't remember what I played for an entire year syndrome. <laughs> Right. Like, what am I gonna say? Yeah. yeah. Th- this year was so full of things. Um, I've actually, it, it's actually pretty funny that you, 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 that we're talking about this because I actually randomly have um an, a list in front of me of all the games that came out this I year. I don't think that's RAM at all. I think as soon as I brought up the topic, you got on the interwebs and looked up a list of all the games that came out. Well, I, I was, I was actually replying to an email, an email thread. I don't believe you. And it just ha- okay. Then I'm lying. I knew it. <laughs> <laughs> yes, L.A. Noir. That 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 was in um, May. That was May. That was a May game. In May. The only good- it 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 balanced out the atrocity that was Duke Nukem Forever. Uh, wow. May would have been a complete disaster had L.A. Noir not come out at the end of May and kind of made May a, a total wash because yeah. L.A. Noir was great. But Duke Nukem was so bad that it's just like, God, to get the universe back in balance, we had to sacrifice L.A. Noir. Yeah. <laughs> and Bondi. Team Bondi. Yeah. Well, yeah. Whatever. So that's really sad. It's it's kind of sad I'm that Team Bondi is sad. <laughs> Why? Why isn't it sad that Team Bondi has gone? Why is it sad? Because uh, it sounds I'm like the there's potential... a bunch of hoopla around it, right? Like the... well, and I yeah. can be remembering this wrong, but weren't they a bunch of pricks? <laughs> Alex says pricks. No. I say hoopla. <laughs> hoopla. I see. I, I don't know if it was. I don't know if it's a matter of 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 being prickish. Um, I I don't know. It I didn't don't, end don't... on good terms between. It didn't end Bondi on good terms. And, and Rockstar. Yeah, here's exactly. Here's how it's gonna. Here's how it goes down with me between uh, Team Bondi and Rockstar. <clears throat> Team Bondi. Uh, I had never really experienced until L.A. Noir, and I got a good game out of them. Rockstar, I had experienced a number of times and enjoyed numbers of games. Ergo, I side with Rockstar regardless. <laughs> Sorry. They got my loyalty. They also yeah. have a cooler name. Yeah. I mean, fact. <laughs> um, uh, you guys yeah, don't uh, have a, a, a DS or anything like that, do you? Jeremy, you have a, a 3DS. Oh. I no, I, I don't have a 3DS. I have a, uh, I have a regular DS, and I don't think I've actually played it that much since I got back from Brazil, like, a year. Like, I don't think I played it this year at all. Did it end yeah. with Zelda? So, I, yeah, Zelda was the last game I played on it. Really? So. I, wish I, I wish I had a chance to, like, play, play those games. Actually, like, um... I've been corrected. I did play uh, that Alice in Wonderland game after Zelda. Oh, yeah. And, oh, yeah. And that, was, that was actually a pretty cool game. But then uh, what happened, here's what happened to my DS. Um, I got an iPhone in April. Oh. And I started playing stuff on the iPhone. Which, yeah. There it is. There it is. And there's, like, uh, there's actually some like articles of, out, out now about like social gamers are gamers too. And like all these games on Facebook and iOS, like are they like real like... You know, should they be considered like real gaming platforms, mm-hmm. really? And uh, I'll tell you something that I've been playing this week, and we can totally go back to you know what we, we enjoyed throughout the year. But this is kind of a throwback. I got Sonic CD on my iPhone, hmm. and not oh my like God. a remake, <laughs> like an actual perfect port of Sonic CD on on my iPhone from Sega. You know, they came out with it. And it plays just like I remember it playing. Wow. Very nice. It's like it's it's uh it's been called an impeccable port, and it's for two bucks. Um, two bucks on the iPhone. So, I've been enjoying the hell out of that for the last like for the last week. So. Hmm. Very cool. I'm I'm gonna come clean. I don't think I ever played Sega CD. Yeah, it was. Uh, 
I mean, I, I, I didn't actually play it that much. Like, now, now that I was playing playing Sonic again, I'm realizing I, I didn't actually give my Sega CD a ton of attention. And I think it's just because I ended up uh, playing, like, Nomad or something like that. Like, uh, I had the handheld Genesis at the time, so. Mm -hmm. yeah. A Nomad? Yeah. You know about that? <laughs> of course. Yeah. A no, what's a nomad? A lot of people didn't, because like Game Gear came out, and then like the Nomad came out, and uh, I have no idea what that is. At least in my neck of the woods, it's it's a handheld Genesis, and you literally take your Genesis games, and you play it like a, you know, like a Game Gear or a PSP. I still have it somewhere, but like Dude. Genesis cartridge. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, you just you just take your Genesis cartridge. And it's it's kind of a bulky thing because it's it has big. to fit a, fit a Genesis I, yeah, cartridge yeah, that, that in it. Yeah, that big ass cartridge. But it's got a six you know six button Genesis controller on it. What? And a, a screen, full color screen, and it's oh, yeah. uh, not as blurry as the Game Gear. And uh, the battery life is uh, the battery life by itself is bad, but you get the battery add on pack, which makes it even bulkier because now it's got a big old like backpack <laughs> on the back of it. I was going to say, yeah. it comes with a, uh, a strap attachment, too, so you can harness it over your... Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, like, it's like a solid brick with, like, another half brick welded onto the back of it. And you get Dude. about four hours of Genesis out of, that. out of these things. That's crazy. <laughs> nice. So, um, cool, wow. They were so apparently, like, really... The only reason I brought that, I brought the DS, the DS thing up, because, because there were so many DS games that were, like, really really good this year um I, but, 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 i'm not concerned with games that we didn't play though yeah me either i, I was just saying it i was just wondering because jeremy i i can't seem to find my ds my ds in it from the move is is missing my pink ds ridiculous um, i have no idea where it is jeremy fist cheek <laughs> <laughs> I don't know where my pink DS is, and I don't think I'll ever see it again. I have a strange feeling I don't, I will never see it again. Um, it's possible. So yeah, Jeremy I just thought that will you... never see his copy of Resident Evil 5 again. <laughs> it's, it's true. <laughs> <laughs> I'm holding it ransom for him to move out here. It's 3,000 miles away where all the good beer is as well. It's true. Beer and Resident Evil 5. What more do you need? <laughs> I'm just saying. Yar. Um, so, aside anyway, from sorry. Eleanor, what were, uh, were maybe some other ones early in the year? I mean, I, I remember everything that came out in, like, November. Well, I, got, um, I got one that's, like, kind of like a... Um, it didn't come out this year, but I played it this year. Jeremy. But that's it's always the case with you. But its, it's sequel came out this year and is Game of the Year candidate, uh, I'm assuming, and I would think. I played Portal. And I was really kind of blown away by like how cool that game was. Mm -hmm. That's right. Portal Two came out. And then I was going to, I was totally going to play Portal Two, and I, I just, you know, something shiny came along, and I didn't. But... Yeah. So. Oh well. Well, Portal Two is excellent. Uh, you played it, right? Well. Oh yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Portal Two was really, really good. Um, there was, I mean, there was some shenanigans with the multiplayer. But um, but I, I, I the, the multiplayer modes or the multiplayer mode was really fun, but there was some bull crap with the customization and stuff. Like you had to pay real money for it, and that was oh, that's no good. Was bullshit. Um, but yeah, I loved Portal Two, but for me, it it came and went so fast. Yeah, because it, really... it was such a quick game. I beat it real fast, and then yeah. did the co-op, and I was like, well, I. Have no real reason to ever play this again. <laughs> yeah, but that's unfortunate. That happens. But, yeah, it happens. You I, know uh, what? Um, did you did you did you ever play any of the expansions, Alex? Expansions for Portal Two. Yeah, weren't there any expansions? No. Really? I could have sworn they added like some extra maps. Uh, I don't know. They might have added a map or two, but if they did, it was. Way after I lost interest. Mm. That's th that's my problem with expansions. Is if it's a game that has a story, and I beat it already by the time the expansion comes out, yeah. and the expansion doesn't continue the story but gets slapped in somewhere in it, yeah, I can't be bothered. 
I'm That's not. That's what happened with L.A. Noir. That's what happened with L. Well, yeah. I, for well, me, for me personally, with L.A. Noir, anyway. I mean, like, I I know that like I beat the game, and then the extra expansions came out, Reefer Madness, and all these all these others, and it was. Just... Uh oh. We've we've lost her. <laughs> She's been frozen in time. Perhaps she'll come back. She's been frozen in carbonite. <laughs> <laughs> we'll hang her in Jabba's palace. Awesome. For all to see. Well, actually, related to what she was saying, um, I bought I bought for the PS3, but I was supposed to have like a bunch of um, I was supposed to have like a bunch of cool like add-ons, like like uh added chapters that came in between stuff and they were just supposed to be there for, I what? for LA Noir. Oh yeah. And I played through the game and, uh, and they weren't there. And, uh, you know, I kind of wondered why that was. And, uh, you know, but you know, I got to the end of the game and then I, I think I realized that I just needed to like enter in like a, a play code or no, that's Ubisoft. That's I need, Ubisoft. I needed to enter in some kind of like code, at the beginning right. to unlock them. And then by that time, I think I just played one and, uh, yeah. Yeah. And that was like, uh, yeah, I, I've already finished the story. So, and I had, and I did all the expansions for that, that were, that were out within a very, very short period of time. But I know there was one or two that I didn't get to because it just took too long for them to come out. And I'd already lost interest because I'd already beaten the story. Right. Um, you know, and that's, that's always, that's been the case for me with, both Mass Effect games, um, you know, I, you know, and I, and I know I've said this before on the podcast, but if you if you give me an expansion pack, if you give me an expansion that takes place after the story, or you give me an expansion that comes out before I've beaten the story, I will play it. But if it's an expansion that comes out after I've beaten the game and it takes place before the end of the game, nope. Not getting played. Yeah, it's that. That's a tough thing to do to go back and just kind of like suspend disbelief and be like, I don't know the ending. The other thing they can do though is what Bioshock did with Minerva's Den and make it like a different character concurrent, you know, with yeah, with the main story. Yeah. yeah. In fact, that was or, really cool when they did that. So. Yeah. But, Welcome back, Diana. What happened? Oh, you, uh, you were frozen in you, carbonite. Yeah, we froze you in carbonite and hung you in Java's palace. Yeah. <laughs> but Blaine, are, are we still recording? Of course. Oh, I'm sorry. So well, it was it wasn't stuff for you, Diana Laura. <laughs> oh, so, so it was me. Is is me, right? Yeah, it was you. Oh, okay. Let's just double checking. It wasn't well, us. It was you. <laughs> it was me. <laughs> um, I'm well, sorry. I, what did I miss? Uh, we were just talking about expansions um, and how sometimes they're awesome and sometimes they're bullshit. But we need to move on. He um, said expansions. <laughs> I totally did. Um, so, uh, anyway, uh, what were uh, some of the other some of the other goodens that we played this year that came out this year that we played? This Dragon year? Age Two. I just remembered that. Dragon Age Two. That was what February, March. Something that was like in that? March, March twelfth. That's right. I remember that. Yeah, that was a good game. Another prime example of. Release the expansion before I finish the story, or I'm not going to play it. Bioware is notorious for this, <laughs> and it's not. It's not that it's. It's not that they're doing something wrong by doing that. That's what expansion packs are for. There's to extend your gaming experience. But again, and Diana, you missed this part, and I. But I know I've said it before. The problem is, if I've already beaten the story, I don't want to go backwards in the story. To yeah, play an expansion. I was talking. I was talking about in L.A. Noir how. Uh... I actually bought the PS3 version that had some of the chapters that came between the main story and I didn't unlock them in the beginning and I f forgot they were there and I just kept playing through the main story like a dope. And then I got to the end and realized all I had to do was enter a code to get these like two or three chapters. <laughs> and I only played one of them because I played one of them. I was like, yeah, but I already know how the story ends and I'm ready to move on to something else, unfortunately. Yeah, so it doesn't matter anymore. As good like, a game yeah. as it was, I, I was just kind of like, well, you know, I missed it. So... Yeah, and the 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 problem with the stuff like that is like there's no stakes. If you already know that you know the good guy wins at the end, or you know, or 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 whatever, if you already know how it ends, then what's the point of what? doing? Mm -hmm. But the thing is, is that with Dragon Age, that's different though. How? That's, 
because it's an extension of the story. It's not. It, it's not. The the the, the two uh, Dragon Age expansions are just extensions of the story. After the end. Yeah. After after the end. Oh, but wait. But when did they come out? They came out after. They came out like. I know a... that, but how late after? Like. like what... I don't understand the question. I apologize. When did the expansion come out? Um, well, the one one expansion came out in August, I think, and another one came out like two months before that. Okay, see, I had had the game beaten for five months. I'm not picking it up again. Well, I mean, I mean it would have to be absolutely mind blowing for me to do that. But they're but they're pretty good. I mean, they're they're actually pretty good additions to the story, like the uh, the, the 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 expansions to them. Um, um, you know, and. and and on top of that, like it's the type of thing that, like, you know, you're you're essentially it's just like with Mass Effect, you're what you do in in, in this stuff, it it, tra it transfers over to to the next um, to I was gonna say the next Mass Effect to the next uh, game. to the next story, the next yeah, game. But well, a expansion pack uh, stuff is is uh, it may extend over, but it's not necessary. Because not everybody buys the expansion, uh, and, and and B, like Mass Effect, I've already lost interest in the game, three or four months later. I there's nothing that's gonna bring me back. Well, no, no, no. There's very little that would ever bring me back. I, right. I admit I really wanted to play a layer of the Shadow Broker for Mass Effect Two, but I never did. I probably will before the third one comes out. But, mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, there was, like Dragon Age Two was good. It was a good game, but it wasn't amazing enough for me to have my interest rekindled six months later. Hmm. Okay. Or four or five months later, whatever. Mm -hmm. um, they were great stories. I'm actually like, I actually just remembered that I didn't finish that last one that came out, the Felicia Day one. Um, what? There was a there was a new uh, there was a Dragon Age expansion that came out a couple a couple of months ago that had like one of the characters was like modeled after Felicia Day and then they did like um like web episodes uh that like starred Felicia Day and there were like four episodes, four or five that episodes. Familiar. Yeah, yeah. They, I mean they it was heavily yeah. they, they were they were pushing it. And apparently it was pretty good. Um but it tied it tied into that, that expansion that um that little DLC that they mm. that they added. Nope, I gotta have it all at once. <laughs> so it's all or nothing. Once I put the controller down, never pick it up again. When Alex There's goes more. to a restaurant, you got to bring out his appetizer, entree, and dessert all at once. Otherwise, he will <laughs> shove the dessert in the waiter's face. That's just how he rolls. It's true. I can't be bothered. Yeah. Take this crap back. Right now. All of it. Uh, cheesecake? Yeah, you should have brought that out with the steak. I'm sorry. Yeah, maybe you should have thought about that. Yeah, maybe I want to switch off. You know, mix the flavors a little bit. No, I can't do that. Right. How presumptuous. So, anyway. <laughs> I've what got, else? What else came out? I've got a game that uh, all the games are, are coming back to me that I played this year. Excellent. <laughs> in, in some cases, quite literally. Um, so, Shadows of the Damned. Which oh, I yeah! Just a little bit before Halloween. Um, that was... It was just a really just fun, fun and enjoyable experience. It's, it's a survival horror that, you know, if you didn't hear me talk about before, which I know I did, but if you weren't there... It's a survival horror that doesn't take itself too seriously. It's very humorous, you know, a lot of a lot of potty humor, and uh, you know, some some fun characters and uh, good solid gameplay. So, excellent. Um, yeah, yeah, I want to give that one a try. Yeah, it's def it's it's like an under the radar candidate too because it came out and you know everyone just sort of forgot about it. I think. So, yeah. Um, yeah. You know, if you haven't played it, you know, definitely check it out. You could probably get it for real cheap now, to be honest with you. Probably. So, Think so? Yeah. Probably, yeah. So, what and else that, came out, guys? That just reminded me, you played Dead Island. Yeah. Oh yeah, Dead Island. Yeah. I mean, that was still fairly recent, but. See, the thing with Dead Island is, uh, I got a little bit into it, and then I didn't. Uh, I I I just stopped at one point. Some something else came along. Well, probably yeah. I think Skyrim did actually. Yeah, of course. Yeah, I, I, I actually think this, it did as well. <laughs> I think we all know. So. Anything after November, I think we can make the assumption that yeah. that it was interrupted by Skyrim. I was yeah. playing that in November, wasn't I? Or yeah, late October? Yeah. yeah, I think I was. So. What interrupted? I was playing 
playing Alice Madness Returns and something interrupted me playing that. And it was actually pretty... I was having a good time with that game. I don't remember what it... Oh, it was Catherine. Catherine came out that week. I thought... I, you know, uh, oh. for me... <laughs> well... <laughs> see, the thing is, is that, Sorry. like... The the thing is, is for me, is that Catherine, for me, was, was, was definitely a, a, a pleasant surprise. I didn't expect to play that type of game... And or I'd expect that that type of game, and I didn't expect that that like fun of an experience. And it was it was an addicting experience. Um, unfortunately, I didn't finish it because Sammy beat it before me, and then he was like, "Need to get the next game," and then he sent the game fly game back. So I actually need uh, to need to finish it. Um, the dangers blah. of gamefly. What? The, the the dangers of gamefly. Yeah, of sharing the a game fly. Someone else's. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. So, so if, yeah, for me, Catherine, uh, Catherine was definitely a very nice surprise, and and I and I I really really enjoyed that game. You you, you go in you, and you and you think it's going to be some sort of a relationship type, uh, like you know, sim, and and it's that with you, you know, thought really it was great be a relationship sim. I mean, like it did, like they it didn't really like all of the ads leading up to it just made it seem as if it was just some sort of like a relationship sim because it was like who are you gonna choose and it's like sexually yeah, but charged. Yeah, it, it looked like really freaky. Yeah, and like a horror, like a horror game. Yeah. And uh, and then you know you go in and then the next thing you know it's like a puzzle game that's really fun, and with with that like relationship, um, you know, a, a sim like aspect. Uh, thrown in, and then you have the, the the mystery part about it, and then you know, sort of like the, the the balancing the good and the bad, and it was it was a it was a really great game that like I'm I like it keeps coming back, it keeps coming back, mm -hmm. and it, it actually like you know uh, I read a really great article about somebody who played Catherine, and to them Catherine is like their game of the year because it made them. It made them. Uh, they were actually going through a similar situation, where they were, they were cheating on their girlfriend with this other woman, and. Um, oh dear. Yeah, and so like Catherine helped them. Oh, it was in. It was on Kotaku, and it was a really. It was actually a really really great article, and how like this guy used Catherine, the game Catherine, to sort of like, you know, make that decision and try and deal with. Uh, Deal with the with with the with the situation that was going on in his life, um, so yeah, it, it's. Um, I thought it was a really great game. Catherine, the game that changes lives. Yeah. I got another one. Yes. Dead Space Two. Oh That's my God. That was January. January. That was just January? barely. Yeah. Yep. Scraped in there. Yeah. What? One of the scariest, coolest games I've ever played. I told you that I I bought that game recently, right? Uh, for five dollars. Yeah, you did. Oh, tell that's me that. right. Yeah. Steam had it on sale for five bucks, and I was like, I'll get around. Uh oh. I'll get back to it one oh, day. There we go. Oh, did I? Oh, yeah. You, you dropped out. out. You dropped out for a second, but you're back. I was just so exciting. Yes. Um, yeah, you know, it's, you're you know, gonna it's play even it on, more exciting. Uh, you're gonna play it on normal difficulty this time instead of oh, and he's around. Oh, I'm here. sorry. I just, I just felt like dropping in. All right. Uh, anyway, here's here's what we should do. What? We should shift gears a little bit. Maybe we can come back to this. Yeah. But we should shift because there are other things to talk about. Mm -hmm. And we can always come back to this. So maybe in maybe in the back of your brain, think of more games that you played this year that you enjoyed. I'm How about saying. this? How about uh? Next year, a bunch of games coming out. Name one that you're looking forward to. 